When most people look up SLV, they see a sailing channel. But soon after though, they discover us two humans behind the scenes, who embarked on a wild, enchanting, thrilling adventure. <laughs> and that adventure's been going strong for seven years now. Join us in this episode as we sail towards the Exuma Islands yes! to find some terrifying native iguanas. I'm freaked out. I would love to go back to the big boat now. <laughs> All the while reflecting upon the journey that brought us here. I have no idea. We're just going to put the code zero up because we've got light winds today and we're heading kind of into the wind. You tie that off to the side. Beautiful. I wanted to surprise Riley with this episode. Riley and I have been on some pretty magical sails together. But today, if you'll allow us, we'll take you on a nostalgic journey through some of our more powerful and emotive moments. You mean back to our time in the Azores? Nope. What about Bora Bora? No. Nope. The Galapagos? No. All the way back. Like back to when Riley was the first one to say I love you in a leaky cabin in the winter in Sardinia. Whilst Elena guides us down memory lane, you and I are going to be sailing real time upwind towards the Exumas. A sail that interweaves the two tails, one might say. Yeah, you said it first. <laughs> I was more emotionally mature than you were. <laughs> he was. But I wanted to go through all the seven years and some of the experiences we've been through together as a couple because, I mean, the amount of things we have done and accomplished and overcome. Oh. The scary things we've had so happen can to we, us. So can we talk about the times we nearly didn't make it then as well? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do all of that Grenada. today. Grenada. Elena was flirting with this dude. <laughs> you were. I didn't even remember that. He was a windsurfer. So let's take it back to 2014, the year we met, which is another story. We did overnight sales together. We're getting to know each other as man and woman. Yeah. That one. <laughs> Only day two and Riley's already gone back. Show us your face, Riley. We did run a bit of a lean, but nothing too major, and just booked it. That overnight sail, though, that was a big experience. And we didn't know each other, so we were getting to know each other while As doing all that stuff. One really funny thing I like to tell people was we, we there's no privacy on a boat, you get to know each other very quickly. Within two weeks of knowing each other, I have my head out the bathroom door being like, Riley, can I have some toilet paper? <laughs> Two weeks of knowing each other. You just, privacy goes out the window. What are you doing? I'm trying to stop this noise. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not long. How are you today, David? Grateful for the day of sailing right now. No waves. I mean. Over a bright blue bank. Can't ask for more. So back in 2014, we didn't even have crew on board. It was always Riley and I. In fact, I think it was that way up until Lenny was one years old, and that's when we started getting crew. So we've learned a lot since then. We've gotten wiser. A few more wrinkles, a few more freckles. Speaking of crew, it was awesome to have David back on board. It's been great having different people around us, and what happens if you're not careful is you do learn something from each of them. Baba Darwin is a bit upset. He's got two new teeth coming through. His first teeth. Do you want your mama? <laughs> Uncle Jack and Edda brought us some Tim Tams. Huh? What do you think of it? To clarify, Lenny was digging into the Tim Tams. A staple of the Australian diet. Our most unhealthy, adored, 200 calorie chocolate biscuit. Three wishes and all that? Three, huh? All right. I want a packet of Tim Tams that never runs out. <laughs> How are you today, Sarah? Good, yeah, it's nice to be back out on the water. We've been in the marina for a little bit. Are you excited to see the examiners? Yeah, I'm so excited. The pigs yeah, and the, the seven pigs, the sharks and everything there. Yeah, I'm excited. I've had this and this since 2014. 
Riley Whiteland, and I'm from uh, Adelaide in South Australia. Riley's dad got him this when he brought, when he came over from Australia. <laughs> We'd only known each other a month, and I was sailing with your dad and stepmom. Dad got me this hat, and I thought it was a little bit over the top. That's great. I've grown into a sailor, though, so. Yeah. There's so much that happened in 2014. To go into detail would be this entire episode, but from what I can remember is I was very tired a lot of the time, a lot of sleepless nights at sea. Another water spiral falling over here. Riley, if that hits the boat, it'll tear us in half. Made it out the Gibraltar Strait down to the Canary Islands and prepared for our first really big ocean crossing. But... Got smacked by. Probably I wouldn't call it a storm now, but back then it just scared the bejeebas out of me. We are all losing our minds over this water. Look at this. Welcome to the Exumen. Yes! I can't wait to jump in the water. Just before we head to the beach, to sum up 2014, Riley and I met. I had my 21st birthday on Riley's boat. He asked me to sail around the world with him. Well, it was kind of a, I said, let's go to the Caribbean. Yeah, he said, let's sail around Greece. And I was like, hmm, let's take it one step further. <laughs> Lenny, can you see the iguanas? So these are the North Bahamian rock iguanas. They're only in the Exumas. They're nowhere else around the world. <laughs> now they're all staring. <laughs> Every morning up with the sun. He just will not stop harassing these poor iguanas. Lenny! I guess the other one's moving to Nanny. He's moving to Nanny. Yeah. Hello, it's Lenny. We're having a look at the guys. Oh uh, yeah. As a buddy in a beat. I was in bananas. I need the money for Nanny. And that's one coming. One coming to me. That's. I'm freaked out. I would love to go back to the big boat now. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen you like this, hey? <laughs> It seemed that while Riley's worst enemies in the Bahamas were the pigs at Pig Beach, mine had quickly become the rock iguanas. Their eyes are far too beady and they're way too similar to a dinosaur for me to really trust them. I'm not doing it! Lenny, can you get some leaves for me? <laughs> we fled the iguana infested sands and climbed the coastline to check out a deserted building. So early 2015 we crossed the Atlantic. Arrived there and did a charter, which was a bit of a lull. Yeah, before we knew we'd become YouTube creators. We'd only posted a, a few videos by this stage and they they had done really well, but we didn't think we could become YouTubers full time. So we did an unofficial charter and then we island hopped all through the Caribbean, down south um, as the hurricane season was creeping in. Got hauled out in Grenada. Yeah, we got hauled out and we flew back to Australia because we'd completely run out of money after only a year of sailing. We weren't sure if we'd be able to come back to the boat anytime soon. So at the moment, I think the most important thing for you and I is work. So directly after that is movies. So we need to keep making movies and keep making good movies. To get back to the boat, we need jobs. Yeah, we went back to Australia and, and worked our butts off to afford to come back to La Vagabond and relaunch after the hurricane season. I did a little busking in the city and then a month went by and still nothing, so I resorted to other ways of getting some cash. He likes it! He likes it! He likes it! He likes to eat it! Little did we know back then that we'd soon be sailing with two under fives. Lenny's put all of his toys up here. So he's on the floor playing by himself with no toys. Oh, that's pretty nice. Good boy, Lenny. You've been a good boy playing with baby Darwin this morning. Looking back, we couldn't have imagined in our wildest dreams what that future of ours held. We feel incredibly grateful. 
So 2016, we've got New Year's in Los Roques, one of our favorite places ever. And we've just been through something crazy together in running out of money and wondering whether or not the summer romance would continue to last onto the boat. And how did that feel running out of money? Well, it wasn't awesome, but I knew that I would just go back to go back to work. It was just a matter of how long it was going to take for us to get back to the boat. Yeah. So 2016, when we came back to the boat, this was amazing for Riley and I. It was just more, it felt more solid because you guys were watching and demanding more videos and supporting us, and we were able to keep sailing and doing what we love doing. That was a happy time. We went through the Panama Canal. We spent 21 days at sea together crossing the with Pacific dad. with Riley's dad. I got a hot pot of water spilt on me. So the boat was so heeled over that the gimbal stove hit the back of the wall. It was no longer working as a gimbal. It yeah. was, we were heeled over like that. And a boiling hot pot of water came onto my leg. As one sails the high seas, and this is especially true for a mono hull like we used to have back then, naturally the boat rocks in time with the rhythm of the sea. So Elena had been boiling hot water for cooking. Most stoves on sailboats have a gimbal set up, meaning that they can adjust in order to counter for the rocking of the boat. Unfortunately, our mono hull heeled over so far that the gimbal gimbaled as far as it could and then the oven hit the wall. Water splashed up onto the wall, the countertops and onto Elena's thighs. Not the kind of injury you want weeks from land and help. She said that she was always impatient for a cup of tea, which was the thing that would have saved her in the end, as she never used to let the water fully boil. Note to Benito, make sure that yeah. the stove can gimbal 360 <laughs> degrees if necessary. We spent so much time going through the Pacific Islands. It's really like something out of a book, hey? Maybe your book. Maybe my book. Oh, it just looks so amazing. It has been, yes. It's been an adventure, yeah. We made it to New Zealand, and in that whole time, Riley had saw the Ultramer for the first time and sent them an email, and that's when our lives changed again. Let's all enjoy a drink together, and uh, once again, thank you very much, especially for the bilge pump. <laughs> Putting stuff in the water, you know that's not a good idea, right? That's not a good idea. It, it, it would sink. It will sink, yeah. What are you doing, Riley? David's up the mast. We just got the light back. There's the light there. He forgot to take it up with him. I took it off in St. Augustine. And um, then it just arrived the other day. So that's like a month later or more. So we'll have a... A uh, mooring light. A tri-coloured light. Okay. The white light. Well, you have to find out why the white light isn't working, Lenny. And this one doesn't work. White, only white, Lenny. Yeah, white. Yeah, this is what we need now. He wants mama. <laughs> he does want mama. Yeah. Maybe he wants your granola. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Being a ninja. <laughs> I'm teaching Lenny how to walk quietly because he walks around like an elephant. Yeah, he stomps with like the biggest feet. Before we move on to 2017, I wanted to add some more things to 2016. You and I, we had a pirate scare. Let's not forget that. There was a vessel, you know, smallish but fast looking with a huge engine on the back. Five dudes on it inbound really quickly. Also, you thought I'd fallen overboard. How was that? Oh, it didn't really worry me. <laughs> oh, don't be so mean. <laughs> Riley and I are on a romantic paddle, just the two of us without children. We thought we'd uh, tell you the rest of our experiences that we've had together as a couple that have bonded us for life. Go, go, read them out. Okay, Come on, what so out? before we move to the new boat, I forgot to say, Riley, remember when you single-handed sailed from Tonga down to New Zealand, it took you 10 days and your satellite phone died, and I thought you died. <laughs> I left the curry on, got distracted by the dolphins. Hey guys, I'm gonna go sailing. It's gonna be good. Obviously, uh, Elena's not around. Yeah, I was just talking about that. Yeah, so for like, for 
maybe 12 hours. I didn't hear back from Riley and he was messaging me on the sat phone. I was hours away from calling for help for someone to come and find Riley. And when I found out he was alive, I was very, very happy about that, as you can imagine. So we sold the Vagabond the first and then we moved over to Europe to get our new boat. Yay! <laughs> oh. oh, and here it says we experienced what it was like to sail fast. That was a nice experience between the, the two of us. I mean, we yeah. just got 22 knots, and I'm telling Riley we need to take a read now. Amazing. Babe, come on. We need to take a read. What's that weird hum that happens? Me. I don't know, but let's not wait to find out. And that was scary. I was like freaked out sometimes. Hey. Yeah, it takes it takes a bit to get used to. Yeah, so that brought us together closer as a couple, I would say. Not dangerous, to not be dangerous. sure. Before that, we'd only ever sailed slow. Sailing. Yeah. And as soon as we got a taste of what it was like to go fast, <laughs> our whole lives changed. 2018, we crossed the Atlantic, just the two of us, and we thought you broke your neck for the second time. And it was a very distinct feeling, all pins and needles went up my arm. <laughs> but he thinks he's okay, so. <laughs> I think I'm a little bit traumatized from this event. I thought we were going to lose you. It was a very, very scary, sad moment. No! <laughs> So that crossing was hectic and it's funny because when we arrived in Antigua, Riley got an x-ray, his neck plate was still in place, we got pregnant with Lenny. <laughs> if you don't already know the exciting news, Riley and I are going to have a baby. <laughs> I'm going to be a dad. <laughs> if he rolls over to get up now. But I feel good. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, we, we just realised, like, honestly, we realised life was really short and we were like, we want a baby, let's do it, and we got lucky. And then from there we sailed to the US and the Bahamas, pregnant with Lenny, and then we had Lenny in December. Did you like that one? Did you like that one? 2019. We sailed as a family of three down from South Carolina to the Bahamas and had the most incredible time sailing with Lenny as a little baby, spearfishing. It felt like I was missing a limb not having Lenny nearby, but I knew this was going to be so good for the both of us. Mike took us out on his awesome fast runabout boat so that we could get out deep to some cool spots. We found a love for spearfishing, freediving and this place. And then, at the end of that year, we couldn't have expected, you're not going to believe this, but Raleigh and I are sailing Greta Thunberg and her dad across the North Atlantic to get them back home. And how did that impact on our relationship? I mean, you hugged me and cried of joy. You were so proud of us and what we'd achieved. Joy, but also like release. Relief, relief and release, yeah. One of the toughest things you, Riley, have ever done as a captain. And I trusted you and we just, we accomplished this amazing thing. So that brought us closer together as a couple. It sounds really cheesy, but I feel like we can accomplish a lot of things together as a team now. Feels like we could do anything now. <laughs> so 2020, everyone's got their crazy 2020 stories. After that big trip, we went back to Australia to have a bit of a break. And after a couple of months, we were ready to jump back on our flight to the boat and COVID hit and we, thankfully got on like one of the last flights back to the boat or we would have been in a bit of a pickle. For that year, we sailed Portugal and the Azores, which are so beautiful. I became pregnant with Darwin. <laughs> we just had the hardest day of travel. <laughs> I can't even imagine having a second child now. But during this whole time, I was really suffering seasickness. I mean, every tough thing you go through as a couple brings you closer together, but that was really tough. Like being seasick and you. Well, I didn't know if we were gonna be able to keep doing what we were doing, mm. so that was shit. Mm. Um, I was getting frustrated with you, uh, simply for being seasick, which isn't fair, I know. We had the kid, we had another kid on the way, and then by the time we got to Madeira. Lenny, did you overstay your visa? I think you did, don't, don't you run away. Don't run away from your problems. There was 
uh, trying to secure a loan for the new boat. Tropical depression headed our way and we were like mental health was just at an all time low on board I reckon. So pregnant with Darwin, still seasick and rally across the Atlantic with Jack and Andre. I didn't join because I was getting so seasick and Lenny and I flew across to meet him in Antigua. I don't think I'm ever going to get used to these iguanas, eh? So, 2021. We spent the start of the year in Antigua, made a really good group of friends there, which was so awesome nice. Awesome crew. Yeah, that was epic. And then we said goodbye to our catamaran, thought it would be for the last time. This is from you, Riley. I love you more than I love lasagna. This is a fast cat. <laughs> you couldn't have even known, because this is so long ago. It's just sad packing up. Packed it up, that was the thing. Yeah, that was stressful. Our life in boxes. Flew back to Australia to have baby Darwin, and yeah. that was so special. Pretty tough, but special. Well done, babe. Thank you. Can I have a kiss? Mwah. Let's not forget, we spent a four, four weeks in total in quarantine. Washing machine, shower. I put my bag on a holiday. Are you Sydney quarantine? I put my bag on a holiday. That wasn't even a challenge, really. We nailed that. One argument for the whole time. I'm for amazed. the 14 days? Yeah. One proper one. One proper argument for one of the quarantines, and then the other two week quarantine. We were sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, I guess the uncertainty we experienced because. COVID spiked in Vietnam and we should have been moving to Vietnam at this time after we had baby Darwin and then we couldn't and so we spent so many nights staying up late trying to figure out what we should do. The unknown and the making plans only to have them broken. Yeah um, and then you got two kids it's not just you you're thinking about anymore. And then when we figured out that the Bahamas was the way to go after yeah we were thinking of moving to Indonesia hiring boats like yeah. we thought that this one was gone then it wasn't yeah so yeah what and I just of all of the things that could have happened this is the best case scenario. golly gosh here we are under a beautiful shady tree surrounded by iguanas ankle oh nipping <laughs> iguanas anyway thank you guys so much for watching happy seven year anniversary <laughs> I don't want to get too cheesy but thanks for doing life with me well, yeah, thank you too. Thanks for agreeing to come on board with me. That's all right. This is genuine, but really difficult when there's a camera there. So yeah, I'm gonna sign off right now. <laughs> How about you let us know in the comments what your favorite memorable moment or thing you experienced with your partner, if you have one. Especially um, the guys, get <laughs> yeah. romantic. Let's, let's get amongst it. Let's. Yeah. Let us know in the comments, we'd love to read some of your moments. I'm going to extricate my hand from this branch. 